Over the last few months, the intelligence agencies of a growing list of countries, from Germany, Norway and the UK in Europe, to Australia, have been quietly weighing up the future in a warming world. Now America is putting the finishing touches to its intelligence assessment. I understand it looks out to the year 2030 at 40 nations where the effects of climate change might have a knock-on effect for America. The significance of this is not in what it says, but who's saying it. The message is broadly similar to that coming from scientists. But the fact that the intelligence agencies in the States have taken ownership of this gives it fresh weight in U.S politics? I think it's fundamentally important because as the world's only superpower, the security community obviously has far greater weight in the US than it does in other capitals in the world at a global level. And by making climate change a matter of fundamental national security, it puts it on a par with other issues such as economic security, energy security, food security, which are currently driving US policy. Once we get that, we can see fundamental changes in the way the U.S. interacts with the world on climate change. The key message in the intelligence assessment is for the incoming president that the international community now expects America to set meaningful long-term goals on cutting greenhouse gas emissions. And there's a warning, too. If Washington is not seen as doing enough, it will damage its leadership reputation, giving other nations the upper hand. This uh, national intelligence assessment will help to mobilize uh, the wheels of the U.S. government and its many agencies uh, to begin further to understand climate changes and national security matter um, and to pre prepare to take um, action um, both to, but to address it as a national security and important global challenge. The assessment has added impetus because it comes with the full support of the military and they have special reason to be concerned. I understand the report says that a significant number of military coastal installations are assessed at high risk because of rising sea levels. It's also a wake-up call uh, for Americans and for those around the world that key coastal areas uh, are at risk from sea level rise, uh, storm inundation and extreme weather events um, and we see increasing signs of that um, now. So we need to pay attention, we need to plan and prepare and make our own uh, country and regions around the world more resilient to uh, climate change effects that are happening even today. One of the most striking conclusions of the assessment is that Russia has the most to gain from climate change, followed by Canada as the permafrost in the north thaws and both gain access to mineral resources and transport routes through the Arctic. Intelligence agencies see a future where the first world lies between 40 degrees north and the North Pole, and the second or less developed world would encompass everything beneath it. Incidentally, that includes Washington, D.C. Well, these agencies have uh, great investments, great reach, uh, international reach, great power, and they are essentially involved in helping the world be as peaceful and secure as possible. And if you know, the environment is a, a enabler, if, you, if I might use that term, of, of difficulty, strife, uh, hopelessness, disaster in an area, then they have, I think, a role to play in trying to mitigate that. The assessment foresees increasing regional tensions with countries reaching for scarce water resources. Agricultural production will become increasingly challenging, particularly in developing countries. So the report says making America better able to cope at home and more prepared to reach out to international partners will become increasingly important. We need more options. To get more options, we need to spend a lot more money now on science and technology. So from the, just taking America, from the $5 billion a year it spends today on energy research and development, it, could, it should increase that fivefold to $25 billion. That would be the war on terror scale of research and development. Or if we're really ambitious, we could increase it by 10 times to $50 billion US dollars a year. Um, that's around the size of the Apollo program. So we've done this before, when we have a real aspiration in terms of Apollo or perception of a real national security threat in terms of the war on terror. On terrorism, the report says some could argue that the West has caused the climate change problem while forcing its burden onto others, but it judges this unlikely to increase terrorist activity.
Washington can be in no doubt now as to the scale of the challenge ahead. All eyes will be on the new administration to see if it does more than just listen and acts.